Hi felters and crafters and welcome my name is Philippa and in today's video I'm going to answer a question I get asked an awful lot how and where to sell your creations let's get started So we're going to start at the beginning in a way in which I think most people naturally evolve with selling their products and it's the way in which it worked for me too. So you take up a craft, you're really enjoying it, your family are nice and complimentary about your items but your family might be a little bit biased and then maybe you're showing your friends and then your friends or family um, are asking if you could make one for them and that's when I think if they're asking for items that you actually have something that you possibly could sell. And yes, you can try uh, your hardest to find the most honest family member and say, look, what do you think of it? Tell me what's, what's right, what's wrong, what would you pay for that? So I think that's where most of us start. And then we might move into taking it into the workplace. You might have items on your desk and your colleagues might say, oh, that's so adorable, would you make one for me? And then you might gently start to sort of say, well, you've got to cover the cost of the wool and it'd be great if they say they want to pay you a little bit so you might say all oh, five pounds or ten pounds and that's how you can very gently and gradually start to sell your felts or start to see if they are appealing to other people so once you've had good feedback from friends family colleagues then possibly you think well maybe i'll pop it on a facebook group and there are tons of needle felting Facebook groups. And I think these are really great testers for your items. If you pop it on there and you get comments of wow, you know, you get lots of comments, but sometimes there will be people on there that are looking to purchase and they might say, do you sell these? Then you're there already and you know that these items are sellable. The other thing you could put it on is Instagram. And personally, if you are looking to sell your creations, I would have a separate Instagram site to your personal Instagram and put items on there and then start to see if you get comments back from that. Now you can sell through Facebook Marketplace. It's not a place I've sold items myself, but it's definitely possible. And also you could sell stuff on Instagram. Say if you're interested, just DM me. The way in which you might ask people to pay then is um, direct bank transfer or PayPal if you go PayPal for business, which is technically what you should do because it is, or it will become a small business, then you just lose a tiny percentage. I think PayPal for business is about one or 2% they charge, which is completely fair. Always ask for payment before you send anything to somebody who is unknown to you on Instagram or Facebook, um, because there's just no risking it, it's a no-no. You always get payment first. So you've sold some items, um, maybe on Facebook, maybe on Instagram, or you might have skipped that section altogether and just given some to family and friends. And then you've got all of a sudden got about 30 or 40 items and you're thinking, I'd really like to get my money back for some of this wool. It would be excellent. So where's the next stage? I would say a craft fair or a little pop-up shop, a small table somewhere. Do not go mad. You can go in the UK, you can go to school fairs. They're about 10 or 15 pounds. The much bigger um, craft fairs are at least 100 pounds a day. You have to have tons of stock. The stress would be way too much. So definitely just go for a small table. I have got a whole series on craft fairs under my uh, business playlist, but it's really cheap to set up a craft table. You can use items from home to put your items on. Uh, baskets, stands, you do not have to purchase lots of things. Obviously it's great if you have a really good display but you can start with a very small simple display and if you're there solely just to sell some of your items and cover your costs that's great. I would ask you don't sell your items extremely cheaply because I just don't think that's fair on other needle felters who might be at the event. Definitely try and ask a proper price that would cover some of your labour. Places in which you can find craft fairs are Craft Fair UK. You can go on Facebook. They have craft markets uh, pages on there. You can go to your local school. They have Christmas markets, summer markets. Just choose one that's not too expensive and don't expect too much for your first craft fair. Just go and take the feedback from people and hear what they're talking about. Look at what they're picking up. So craft fairs are great. They're really good feedback. They're quite hard work, but I definitely recommend them. Um, the only two things with craft fairs that you've got to consider is how you're going to take payment 
iZettel or sum up. I have an iZettel, it works really, really well. Uh, you can do PayPal, they can email you the money via PayPal and you could do a direct bank transfer. It's quite easy for me to do bank transfers on my phone uh, or cash. Um, if you only have cash, you're probably gonna miss out on about 50% of your sales. And the other thing for craft fairs is um, public liability insurance. Now the International Felt Makers Association magazine that you get a magazine sent out four times a year and it's really good. It's got lovely articles in it, but they include with this for about, it's about 42, it might be about 45 pounds now. For the yearly subscription, you get your uh, public liability insurance for going to craft markets. So that, I do that definitely. I think it's brilliant. And if you need to print it out, you can print it out and show it to the organizers of the craft fair. So there we go. International Felt Makers Association. So the next stage is, I would say, going to a dedicated third party site such as, and here we go, Etsy. And I do recommend Etsy. I know there's lots of people that um, are divided on Etsy. Other sites are fo folksy. I've not done folksy myself. I know that Pam uh, Duthie did one on her channel. So definitely go and have a look at that. She set up and compared it to Etsy. So that was interesting. Not on the high street. Uh, dot com and the other one that's wholesale so if you did cards or notepads like I do notepads from my items then you could send sell things wholesale which is fair f-a-i-r-e so an Amazon handmade which I personally I'm not into selling on Amazon at all so I sell on Etsy um, it takes time to set up if you were to uh, want to set up an Etsy shop, I would say set aside a whole weekend, at least have at least five to 10 items. And again, I have um, several videos on my channel about this. There are lots of YouTube videos helping you open a shop and telling you what to do. So definitely go and have a look at those. So it takes time. There are some issues, but that is where I sell most of my items. So with Etsy, it's very cheap to set up. It's something like 20 pence to list an item for four months. Personally, I think it's great. The charges that I um, kind of, because it's very hard to work out the charges on Etsy. So what I do is I look at my year end and I f find out, so I've sold, well, from January, I've sold 8,922 pounds and the fees are 1,418. So if I work that out as a percentage, it's 15.8%. So I always say the charges on Etsy are about 16%. It's not like 4% and there's a 4%, there's a 5%, there's all sorts of extra percentages. So basically I look at my year end and how much they charge me for the whole year to get a rough idea. So I have a YouTube channel, I have Instagram, I don't do TikTok. Um, I don't do sort of any other social media, but I bring in 36% of my visits and Etsy still bring in 64% of visits. So they still bring a lot of people to me, which is why I think they are great. If no one knows who you are at all, if you've got no social media presence, how are you going to get your name out there? Etsy will help you. Now, do not in any way think it's going to be an overnight success. I started selling my felts, I think it was about four years ago. It will literally take you two years to get any sort of consistency out of Etsy. Think of it as a slow burner, put five to 10 items on there, get your family to buy the first few, which gets the ball rolling. Also, when I sell items to America, Etsy work out all the um, taxes for me and I just put the postage on there now. I don't even bother. I let people know that is what their postage is. I can't uh, squeeze it into my item anymore and absorb it so I literally stick the postage on there and it's up to people whether they want to buy it and 50% of my needle felted items and kits goes to America with the postage on there and then they know what taxes it's all paid before it goes into the country so I do think Etsy is good of the other places I mentioned not on the highstreet.com I know it's it was 200 pounds up front and they take 30% commission. Etsy now seems like a really good deal compared to that. Um, and not on the high street are good and you probably will get sales on there because there's less people on it. But still, if you don't want to gamble or risk any money, you can post items for 20 pence on Etsy for four months and see what happens. But it will definitely be 
a slow burner that will be spanned over at least one, two, three years before you get any consistency. And the problem is people give up. They say the marketplace is flooded. I understand them saying that, but I made, what did I say? 8,000 pounds worth of sales last year. And it wasn't all me bringing that in from YouTube and Instagram. So I still think Etsy is good in the long run, but do not have all your eggs in one basket which moves us on to the next thing. So if you are selling your items well, and you have done some craft fairs, and you have got your social media set up, and you're starting to think, do I really need Etsy to do all my sales? Then you can move on to your own website. Um, if you just want a website that is an information page about yourself, you can get those set up really cheaply. People won't be able to buy items on there, but you could direct them to your Etsy shop. The other sites where you can start selling your items on there are Squarespace, Shopify, Wix, so ones like that. Do go and have a look at videos on where to sell your items online because there are probably many more and there are probably many more in your own country that I don't know about. I have a Squarespace website. It's fairly expensive. It's about £200 a year, but it has everything on there. It's really professional and I really like it. I need to put more items on there. I do know lots of YouTubers uh, that sell sort of stationary products and, and sell quite a large number of products, use Shopify, and they really get on with it. And lots of them moved over from Wix onto Shopify. So Shopify is definitely a good one to look at. If you've got people contacting you all the time, asking to buy your items, that's great because you will take most of the commission, most of the payment. You still have to pay, it's probably about, three or four percent on credit card charges. I'm not sure about Shopify, but Squarespace, I think Square, Squarespace is about two or three percent for uh, them to take the credit card charges. So it's a, it's a lot better than 16 percent, but I don't know how all the taxes and things like that work when you post items to America. You have to be aware that that person is going to be charged tax when the item enters their state and you have to make people aware of that. Whereas on Etsy, it's all taken care of for you. So that is your own website instead of something like Etsy, but you have to be able to drive people to that website for it to be value for money for you. Next up, a shop or a gallery or a boutique. Um, I've dabbled in this and I know lots of people that do sell their items and are very successful. So you could have a shelf, a couple of shelves, a small area. There are lots of various contracts that you're going to have to talk to the shop owners about. And I literally go in, see if I like the shop. There's several um, that I very, there's one I tried um, and there's one that I very nearly tried recently. But go in, have a look around the shop, see how they lay everything out, see how they price items, see if they have a trader number on the item because when someone takes it to the till, how do you know that they're writing it down that you get the money, things like that. So lots of different contracts where you might have to pay, say 25 pounds for the shelf, plus 10% commission, or 10 pounds a month and 25% commission. I have even seen what was approached by a shop that wanted 50 pounds a month and 20% commission and six months contract no, do not sign up to a contract tying you into a place for six months because you have no idea. Say, well, can we do a month's trial, please, before we sign a contract? So you have to work it all out. And I would say, think to yourself, well, if I sell £100 in that shop, how much am I going to take home? And you're going to have to add that um, commission of, say, Literally shops can be 25, 30, 40 percent commission and galleries can be 40 percent, 50 percent commission unless they're desperate for your work and your work is selling really, really well. And then you might be able to um, bring it down a bit by talking to them. Things you have to consider when selling in a shop are, like I said, labelling. How do they know that your items are yours? Who looks after your area? Keeps it tidy? Is it down to you to go in each week and check everything? stock levels is it down to you to watch stock levels or will they message you especially if the uh, shop is an hour away that's going to be awful so if they will tell you when the stock levels are low when to bring stuff over that would help when do you get paid is it monthly is it quarterly 
what happens if an item gets damaged or stolen. So some of my items got damaged in a shop, but maybe that was my fault because I left long haired items in, which as soon as people touch them, they end up in a little bit of a mess. It's fine at a craft fair. I normally don't get any damage at all, but because you know I'd left them for two weeks and then you go in and they were a bit of a mess, I managed to save them. But these are the things you have to consider if people touch your items too much as well. You could sell at small pop-up shops as well. There might be, um, before Christmas, there might be places in Sheffield and Leeds and Manchester. We've got um, companies that bring crafters together and they have someone there all the time who will take payment for you. So you would leave it for four to six weeks. So that's another interesting way to look at it. But again, I find it quite hard to leave my items um, and have people touch them too much. So something to think about, but yeah, shops, definitely you could do it, but they are slightly more expensive. You have to add the price onto your items. Otherwise you will completely lose out 25 to 40% commission. It's quite a lot. So definitely consider your shop carefully. So that's most of the places that you can sell your creations. If I've missed any, do let me know. Words of advice, don't sell in just one place. Um, it's always good to have uh, lots of different ways in which you sell your items. I always think, sometimes I find craft fairs really hard work, but actually when I go, I get fantastic feedback from people. So I'm definitely going to keep doing them. Um, pricing strategies is something I wanted to just cover really quickly. I watch a chap called Tim Koa, who is excellent. He sells stickers on Etsy and his videos are lovely. He's just got a really lovely way about him in which he talks, but he did some pricing strategies <laughs> recently. Prices are personal. They are completely down to you. No one else can tell you what to price your item at. As I said, it's great if you just don't price things too low, please, because it's just not fair on people that are trying to make a living from it. So ways in which people price things. And I thought it was really funny. Some people just pick a number out of the air. And literally, I think you find when your colleague says to you, oh, I'd love to buy one of those. And you just go 10 pounds <laughs> or 15 pounds. You just haven't got a clue how much it costs you to make. And you just pick a number out of the air. So that's when you haven't planned anything and you just come up with the first number that hits you and you think I'd be happy with 15 pounds for that. Competitor pricing, a lot of people do this. Go on to Etsy. I recommend you do this regardless of what price you're going to put it at. Go on to Etsy and look at your competitors and try and put yourself sort of in the middle when you first start selling. And then you're going to gradually want to move further up as you sell more of the items as they become in demand. But yeah, definitely ranging yourself, not the cheapest, but not the most expensive. Cost-based pricing, which is... Um, definitely what I try and do now is tools, materials and labour. I even time myself with items because I feel something took me all day, but actually only took me three hours. And I try to go for £10 an hour for myself. But there might be items that I've had for a long time that I don't like to look at sometimes and want to keep any longer. So I might put those on the slightly lower scale because I want them to sell. And the last one is value pricing, which is more for PDFs and courses. So I have a Henry and Harriet hair course. And on that course, I think I give really good value about two different ways in which to um, make similar hairs, long haired, short haired. And so I am bringing quite good value to that person. So that's when someone has a problem and you solve it, what's the value to them, which I do find quite hard to work out but I am happy with the prices of my courses. I do not like them to be too expensive. So we have covered quite a bit. Selling to friends and family, maybe in the workplace, looking at Facebook, Instagram, then going to a craft fair, selling some items, moving on to a dedicated shop such as Etsy or Foxy or Fair, not on the high street, then moving on to your own website once you're a bit more successful on say Etsy. And in between that as well, as you're going along, you could sell in a shop or gallery. So I just want to cover one other thing. I sold my very first needle felted item on Etsy. It was Henry the Herdwick for £14.50 and it was on the 26th of November 2018. I'll try and get the picture up here if I can for you. He wasn't brilliant, but he was cute, I suppose, and somebody purchased him. 
and it's taken me five years to get to this point and then I started YouTube about three and a half years ago. I sell a range of items in a range of places. So I sell PDFs, courses, I sell kits, I sell needle felted items and I started out doing a lot of commissions which is definitely a way to get business in. I sell notepads, I sell bags and as I said I sell in a range of places. I had a comment recently on my Instagram. The person was really lovely um, about my items and said they were really beautiful, but felt very sorry for me. It was at um, Yummy Yorkshire and I'd done the craft fair display and set it all up. And they said they felt really sorry for me in this present market. How do I make any money? I must have another job, a pension or a husband that supports me. Yes, I do have a husband that works, but I, I just have to say, if someone says you can't do it, don't listen to the naysayers. My turnover last year was 27,000, profit was 15, and I spend no more than four hours a day on this business. I've just had four days off because we had the in-laws staying. It's just uh, so flexible and it's the best part-time job I have ever had. And it's taken me four years I think of treating this as a proper business maybe three because when I started YouTube that's when I really kicked into gear and it's not going to happen overnight it's a slow gradual thing you can run it alongside a job if you want to do that there's no sudden jump into it you just gradually build it up and I imagine where will I be in five years time I know I'm not going to be doubling or tripling my income because it's just me but I could definitely be a little bit further along the line and I can easily be supporting myself in what I would consider to be pretty much a full time wage. So if you want to do it, do not listen to anyone that says you can't or is a little bit negative about it. They're just maybe talking from their point of view. Definitely, if you want to do it, try. Now, if there's anywhere I missed, um, especially if it's more local to your country, do pop it in the comments below because I'd love to have your feedback on this. But thank you for watching. And my next video is going to be talking about the reality of running a business. And I'm going to be really truthful about some of the things you might not have thought about before you start it. But it's an interesting one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.